Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Two Anatomy Geeks. On Tuesday, I'm one anatomy geek, and here comes my fellow anatomy geek, <laughs> my friend and colleague, Jill Leary. Hello, and good well, afternoon. Welcome back. Thank we you. missed you last week. Thank you. I missed you guys too, but I watched it, and uh, I loved what you just did. Awesome, awesome. The f your feeling was okay? Was she, was she okay? We'll keep her around? Yeah, around. she was good. She was good. I was kind of worried <laughs> I might lose my job. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So today we're going to, to discuss posterior tibialis, and this is going to lead into a month-long conversation on lower extremity muscles. Now that the weather's changing, it's actually sunny and it's a little warmer here in Chicago, mm -hmm. even though we're supposed to get some snow tonight, but it's headed that way to brighter days and warmer days, and that means mo more of us will be out walking and running. And that leads into a lot of lower extremity issues around the ankle and foot complex, so we want to just share this information with you. This is part of what we teach in the Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor Program, as well as our year-long intensive the Integrative Movement Specialist Certification Program, where we really stress the importance of functional anatomy because that forms a basis of understanding how the body works and then ultimately the exercises, the assessments and the exercises that you choose to do with your clients. So posterior tibialis, let's talk about the arched insertion. All right, so posterior tibialis, I've got here a right leg and a right foot ankle complex. I can, and hold, I can hold that hold for you. That. Um, we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it around so we can see the posterior, thus the name posterior tibialis. And what you have to picture in your mind is that this muscle is going to be deep to both gastroc and soleus. So you have to peel off the gastroc, peel off the soleus, and then voila, underneath you're going to have posterior tib. And what it does is it originates from the posterior aspect of the tibia, posterior aspect of the fibula, and then also there's an interosseous membrane, kind of like connective tissue that is going to hold these two bones together up here, and it's also going to originate from that. So it's got a pretty wide origin. Now what it does is it comes down, as you can see, it's almost kind of down, running down the center of the calf area, the posterior calf, and then it's going to come around and, and I'm going to turn this around, Dr. Osser, just for a second. We've got to come down to, this is, again, this is your medial arch right here, okay? And this is your medial um, uh, malleolus, and it will, the tendon now, will come around the backside of that medial malleolus, and it's going to go down and underneath that medial arch of your foot, and its insertion is going to be on the planter or the bottom surface of the foot. And specifically in different books say different things, but everything from the bottom of or the plantar surface of the navicular, um, the cuneiforms, the cuboid, the base of the um, metatarsals, just because how it like interweaves with a lot of the connective tissue that's under there. So um, two of the main actions of posterior tibialis because of its fiber direction is that it is a muscle that does um, uh, plantar flexion. Right. And then it also does inversion, where you're taking that medial arch and kind of turning it in towards the midline. So that's your posterior tibialis. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, one of the issues that a lot of our clients have is shin splints. And shin splints are generally, there's no such thing as your shin. When people say shin, they just really mean the tibia area. So you can have anterior shin splints. We'll talk more about the anterior tibialis coming off the front side of the tibia here, but you can also have more posterior shin splints or medial shin splints on the medial side of the tibia, and that's what people generally refer to as shin splints, and that's generally irritation of that posterior tibialis tendon as it runs down the medial side of the tibia. I'm going to have Jill sit here just for a moment, and, for, and what a lot of clients will be taught to do is they'll be taught to do plantar flexion and inversion, because remember, as Jill discussed, plantar flexion and inversion is the action of the posterior tibialis. So what will generally happen, this, this is too short, but again, what they would do is you would basically plantar flex the ankle. Go ahead, plantar flex the ankle. There you go. And you'd also invert, so she'd kind of push that direction or invert that ankle and foot complex to strengthen that, strengthen that posterior tibialis. And again, that works in the open chain, meaning like the foot is off the ground, that's open chain. But again, when we function or think about the function of posterior tibialis, posterior tibialis functions when the foot is on the ground specifically. It's really focused on the functional anatomy of it is it's 
it will decelerate as you step onto your right leg, for example, it will decelerate the eversion that happens as you load your foot. It will also then help gather the foot, make it more rigid so that you have a more rigid platform to push off of. So it decelerates the forward momentum as you load the foot during walking and or running. And then it will also gather the foot and make it more rigid so you have a more rigid lever to push off of as you're walking and or running or propelling yourself forward. So we want to make sure that we're also doing closed chain exercises to make sure the tibialis anterior can, or should say posterior, posterior tibialis can control that motion. So one exercise we'll do with our clients is we're going to have Jill face the wall. Hopefully you can see her feet in the video. So we'll just have her put her hands lightly on the wall there just for support. You can move over to your right just a little bit. Now, Ideally, what you want the client to be able to do is maintain the calcaneus or the heel in between the medial and lateral malleolus, in between the big toe and small toe. So we'll have a Jill do a heel raise. So go ahead on your toes. We want the heel to be straight up between the big toe and small toe. Hold that for a count of three, two, one, and now slowly come back down, drop the heel down directly between the big toe and the small toe. Let's do it again. So she'll come up, keeping the weight equal between big toe and small toe because the posterior tibialis will work also with the peroneus longus because peroneus longus is doing the exact opposite. We'll talk about that muscle in a few weeks as well. And control the position between of the foot between the big toe and small toe. So that way we were getting the concentric action of lifting up. Lift up one more time, please. And then we're also getting the eccentric control as a client or the individual comes back down to place the heel in between the big toe, small toe, keeping that weight equal between the inside and the outside of the foot. So that way we're getting functional control of the ankle and foot complex. And we're helping the posterior tibialis function both during its eccentric loading as well as this concentric action. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's been another great session with you. Thanks. So hope you enjoyed this session. Hope you learn and discover some a little bit more about the posterior tibialis. It's also called the tibialis posterior depending on where you read it. So again, either name applies. Next week, we'll be back with another Two Anatomy Geeks on Tuesday at 12.15, where we'll discuss, I'm not sure which muscle I believe is gastroc or soleus, another one of, one of those lower leg muscles. And if you're looking for an intensive, we have a three-day intensive, the Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor Program, where we teach you the functional anatomy and then how your assessments, your corrective exercise strategies, and your functional progressions are built off your understanding of functional anatomy as well as biomechanics. Understanding this will help you better help your clients so that you can be the solution they need, want, and will seek out. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week on Two Anatomy Geeks. And I'll be back this weekend doing a Facebook Live on using the posterior tibialis in functional activity. Make it a great day. This is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education.